explore about this tonight. And Morris McLeod is CEO of Race on the Agenda, a social policy think tank, and joins me live via video link. Evening to you, Morris. Hello, Christo. Um, so firstly, how's Black Lives Matter and the controversies around Black Lives Matter, the particular organisation, I'm not talking about the phrase, I'm not talking about the obviousness, who would deny that, that Black Lives Matter are important as, as, as other ethnicities' lives, lives, it's absolutely reasonable to make that point. But the organisation itself, has it become a little bit toxic in the context of race relations? Um, hi, no, not not at all. So, so uh, first off, I think that it's really important to to make clear that the the, the calls for racial justice don't belong to any one organisation. I don't think Black Lives Matter or any other group would say that they own that campaign or that movement. So, the 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 the, the problem or the 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 why the reason I'm slightly um, I guess exasperated by this is whenever there's a movement, if you can't argue against the issue what normally happens is you start attacking whoever you perceive to be given the message you know the message so you know where 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 this woman happens to live i don't see how that's got anything to do with the fight against uh, global racism but if the fight against global racism is the only goal then i would agree with you but there are political goals attached to that and this person is a founder of that organization one of the political goals is anti-capitalism she describes herself as a marxist and some of her critics i think understandably have accused her of abandoning the social justice and activist roots by saying well hang on you're anti-capitalist and you are marxist in your outlook but you've bought a 1.4 million dollar property and three other properties that you plan on maybe renting out or doing something else i mean you must see that that's hypocritical well as, as i say is a complete distraction because that's you know, it, it doesn't matter. But seeing, seeing as this is where we're going with the conversation, um, why being anti-capitalist, but living in a capitalist society, as she does, she's not got the power to take herself out and live on an island and, and, and live without money. So she has to live within the system. How much is she allowed to spend on her house then and still be within, you know, this imagined uh, lack of hypocrisy? I, I just think it's, it's, it's nonsense. No one, no one cares or knows how much uh, you know, where the owners of hedge fund companies live. No one knows or cares, you know, where other people live. But it's an issue where this woman happens to, to live. I say good for her, live where she wants. So, OK, I, 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 I am someone who is anti-homophobia, right? I get a lot of stick on this show as a gay man for banging on about it so much, right? And if I were to have the position that I believe that capitalism is one of the ways in which gay people are oppressed. I don't, but if that was my stance, and if that was something I passionately argued, would you not think the fact that I'm a buy-to-let landlord, which I am, would somewhat undermine my argument and therefore give rise to the distraction that you're talking about? I mean, I don't, I don't know how you can't see it as something that is actually that is actually going to create the very distraction that you're complaining about my 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 argument is that whatever whatever you let's say you're you, you know you're you're this uh, um lgbtq activist whatever yeah. you do if people want to argue against you they'll find a way whether it's where you happen to live or oh he claims he's this but look he's driving a car that was driven by this homophobe they'll find a way so the best thing to do is let's not talk about the messenger and let's talk about the homophobia then in, in, in the case that you're talking about. But, That's but not don't you see that my fight against homophobia would then be discredited? So, of course, I understand if it was if it was a, a, a microaggression where we're saying, right, you know, you drove a car that was once driven by a homophobe. Fair enough. But we're talking about the basis, one of the 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 the, the basic uh, 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 political goals of the organisation which is that capitalism is the bad thing. Do you, again, I don't understand how, fine, if she was to buy an apartment or give away the money instead, I would say, fair enough, you've bought an apartment, any of the money left over, you've given it away. But this organisation doesn't give away its finances, hasn't been held accountable for its finances, has capitalism as one of the things that it claims that it's against, and then its founder has four properties recently, 
and a predominantly white area as well. I mean, you, you again, I, I, I just don't know how you can't think that that is undermining the very message that they're trying to get across. I mean, I, I guess all I, all I can say is if if someone was really interested in, in fighting racism and then they saw this or found out that this woman lives where, wherever it is you said, and that, that puts them off the fight, they were never really on board. So... Like I keep saying, it's it's a massive, so you, it's a massive so you, you think well, I might could, not choose to live there, but that's up to her. But so she could, do you think that she can then with any credibility go on and keep fighting capitalism and keep claiming that Marxism is the way forward to fight, wh whether we agree with it or not, to fight racism? Do you think that that's something she still has the credibility to do? So, so if, I, if, I, if I believe that, I don't know, drugs should be decriminalised, but they're not, that, you know, I live in a world where they're not, that doesn't mean I can just walk around smoking drugs because that's what I believe. You have to live in the world that's created. She's living in a capitalist world. That means she needs to live somewhere. I really don't see it as an issue. But she doesn't need to buy three other properties. Maybe she's giving, maybe she's renting them for a low rent. I don't know what she's doing, nor, nor do you. It's a, Well, why doesn't she give the money away in taxes? Why doesn't she give the money away to charity? Why doesn't she put the money back into the Black Lives Matter movement to help the people that... I mean, that's Marxist ideology. That is what Marxists... The Marxist ideology that they, that she claims is necessary to fight racism would be about people having equal amount of, 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 of money and goods and all of those sorts of things. So it's hypocrisy. Well, one, I think you you might be misunderstanding her view of Marxism, but she's not here, so I'm not going to argue that on 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 her on her behalf. Like like I say, that you know what, where she chooses, you know, you don't know what she's doing with those properties. You don't know what she's doing with her money. You don't know where her money's come from. All of this is just it's nonsense. And I, I bet you the vast majority of people who are who are interested in fighting racism are not the slightest bit perturbed by you know, this story, it doesn't mean anything. Well, you see, I disagree because I've always said on this program, and again, some people have agreed with me, some people haven't, but I believe in the ideology of Black Lives Matter. I don't believe very much in the organisation. And I guess maybe it's because it's one of the bugbears of mine is that the organisation's goal is a political one to dismantle capitalism. And that that's something that they've been really open about. They feel that capitalism disadvantages people who are non-white. And for me, that would be throwing the baby out with bathwater. So perhaps that's why I particularly get vexed by this level of hypocrisy. I mean, do you think that that's a realistic goal of an organisation that has a goal of, of, of being equality of being getting rid of racism do you think that, that that should be a part of their their set of criteria to get rid of racism this capitalism idea there's no way i'm gonna sit and, and sort of say what what you know some organization in america chooses to have as its policies it's it's irrelevant if you the, the, here, here's a way of looking at it Christa. if you if you say you agree with the ideology but you don't agree with with, with black lives matter uh, in the usa or the uk their political goals i don't agree with your own campaign do the thing that you think will make a difference instead of just being critical of the people that are doing something no because if they're fighting for something that i disagree with which is getting rid of capitalism surely i have the right to my free speech to say well look i agree with that aspect of what they're saying and i i so for instance i disagreed with all lives matter that side of it i felt that that was directly undermining black lives matter and i was very open in saying look if you say all lives matter in response to black lives matter you're undermining the message of black lives matter but surely i'm allow allowed to use the same free speech to say well look i don't agree with that part of their message though i feel that on that part they're misguided. Surely I don't need to just say, well, look, I agree with anti-racism and that's that. I don't have to critique any other aspect of the organisation. There are some gay organisations I disagree with some of their their goals. Absolutely. I, I, maybe maybe I'm not explaining myself clearly enough. If you if you don't uh, believe in, you believe in fighting racism, but you don't believe in their solution, which which is that capitalism is the root of racism, I think they're probably right. If you don't believe that, then do the thing that you think if you really want to fight racism, do the thing that you think uh, will solve but, it. But, and, but you know, do, you, but, but do you believe that capitalism is one of the things that, that, that perpetuates racism? Say so, so again, sorry. So I, do, I you, but do you believe capitalism is one of the things that creates racism? I think capitalism is probably at the root of a number of uh, inequalities in the world. It, by definition, it's about inequality. Right. Well, I get that. 
But why then is it wrong? I don't really understand. So maybe I'm at a loss. But so you are OK answering that capitalism is is something that you want to get rid of then? Uh, the I personally, so if, if it's, it's, we're getting quite hip, 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 hypothetical here, but you mean if I were in charge no, of the world... No, we're not getting hypothetical because it's one of the goals listed on the Black Lives Matter website. So why but, is it hypothetical? But, but, and as, I've said, as I've said, I'm not a member of Black Lives Matter. I don't know or care really what their policies are. I know that I'm working to fight, ra fight racism in Britain and I know what I'm doing here. If you know what you're doing, then be sure of yourself and don't worry about what some organisation in America's done. That, that's my point. But then what's the point of the organisation if we're not noticing what they're doing and talking about it? The, 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 the Black Lives Matter protests were, you know, they were very instrumental in, in corralling them and in building them and making them go global and getting messages out there. They were, they were there at the beginning. But, that, you know, the, the, beauty, the beauty about a movement that comes from the ground is you can cut off the leaves and it doesn't affect the movement. So, so like I say, don't, don't get obsessed with... I, I, I have no idea. I, I work in this field and I've got no idea what Black Lives Matter USA's policies are because they don't matter to me. What matters to me is what happens in the UK. Well, I think that UK policy is the same on that, by the way. Black Lives Matter UK's arm also has the, the, the same policy about wanting to abolish capitalism. Good, then, and if that's something you support, then back them. If it's not something you support, do something else. Right. OK. Um, do you think that it's right that someone who has made that point about the one point four million dollar home in uh, the USA, do you think it's right that, that Twitter should deplatform them for that? See, uh, again, I don't I you know, I don't work for Twitter and I don't know this this uh, journalist who was was banned. Uh, the explanation I saw was that they uh, that he posted the woman's name, obviously, and a picture of where she lives. Now, she you can imagine, you know, she's the sort of person that quite a few people in America would like to hurt. Now, I think Twitter probably erred on the side of caution and went, you know what, if this goes out on our platform and something happens to this woman, it's going to be on us. Please take it down. He wouldn't. He's getting the publicity he wanted. I mean, I don't know whether he would have done it for publicity. i, I tell you why I have a, a, a bit of a problem, Morris, is that, that it, it sounds a bit like you're sort of saying that you support Black Lives Matter, but if we don't like parts of it, we should keep quiet about it, but the bits we like, we should maybe be open about. Uh, absolutely not. No, I, I, I believe in democracy. I, I, you know, I, I, if you show me a list of policies that Black Lives Matter support, and I'll go, I like that one, I don't like this one, and I'll campaign on the ones that I, you know, that I like, and the ones I don't like, I'll argue to change them. If they don't get changed, I'll do something else. That's how democracy works. You don't you don't have to um, buy into every single line. You go, okay, this is this is who I'm standing next to today. This is who's fighting racism with me today. I'm not going to vet every single person in a demonstration to work out, make sure that our views are perfectly aligned. I'm going to go today. We're talking about this, and if I agree with that thing, then I'm standing next to them. So I, I think it goes bigger than that. Maybe it's more than just a, than 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 Black Lives Matter. I was making the point earlier it would be like again um standing next to uh, uh, a, a very far left politician at a demonstration uh, that it's anti-capitalism and finding out that they've got a hundred properties that they rent to people that would make me feel uncomfortable and so i do think it matters about the individuals that you're you're stood with actually i think it is bigger than just whether it's black lives matter or not it's about the integrity of people that are representing a movement i think Sure. Um, um, and you can probably find lots of uh, similar cases of people saying, oh, I'm working for the, you know, the, I'm standing up for the working man from whichever party and, and finding out that they're multimillionaires, you know. And put, so so I don't think that's anything new. That's why I say let's let's take our eyes off of leaders and individuals and let's 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 concentrate on getting things to be better. So how do we do that if we're not concentrating on the words and actions of leaders and, and, and individuals in movements? You, 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 we do it by, um, by look, looking at each strand of our, our life. That's what, that's what I would do. Okay, so where do I work? What, can I, what would I like to do to fight racism at work? What power do I have? What power don't I have? And work, working through that and seeing what sorts of things you can do, what things you're comfortable with, what things fit in with your particular view of politics. If everybody was doing that, we'd end up in a better world anyway.
I mean, I don't have a particular affiliation to a, a, a party, by the way. I mean, I don't I kind of think that none of them are worth the paper that they're written on. I think we have a buffoon for a prime minister and I think we have an opposition that doesn't oppose. So at the moment, I feel quite politically bereft. So I'm certainly not asking these questions in any affiliation to kind of any political party. Um, I'm just interested in, I guess, how much the actions of an individual affect the overall goals of an organisation they represent. Yeah. I, I, I think they often do, but that's that's a problem. We should get away from that. We should try to move to to that not being the case. We focus too much on the individual in, in any case, even whether it's, you know, the, the government. You might say, oh, I hate Boris Johnson. And then they get rid of him and put in someone else doing the same thing. It's not the person but then, you hate. But, but, see, but I think, so again, I don't dis disagree. I mean, I don't hate them. But again, Boris Johnson, someone, this is the very similar principle. Boris Johnson is banging on at the moment about carbon taxes and climate change. The man's got six children. Now, to me... That absolutely goes to the heart of the matter. And I'm not going to sit here and say, well, actually, look, what he's saying about climate change, it is valid. So let's ignore his hypocrisy on the number of children that he has. Because for me, the individual representing that particular policy, what they do in their private lives, how they act day to day, if that is undermining the message they're having, then to me, that is absolutely integral. Yes, so it's perfectly fine to, in an interview with, with the Prime Minister, say, oh, you, you believe in, in this, but in your, in your life you've done this, this and this. Please, can you explain? And have them explain. The same with this BLM leader. Say to her, you say you're a Marxist, but, you know, can you get someone on that has no idea about her views to try and explain why she's done something? Ask her. There might be a, a answer that makes you go, oh, wow, actually, that's really good. At the moment, we don't know. It might be the same with the Prime Minister and his his children maybe he's doing it for for some reason that, that that is really environmental we don't know you need to ask him um can i talk to you as well if you don't mind about language because i think what's really interesting at the moment and again someone who is gay i'm very conscious of the way in which language changes and the way in which it's important that we keep up to date on the latest way in which people want language to change and we've recently found out that that bame is a term that we should be moving away from. And I understand the reasons why uh, we need to move away from that term. I think it sort of lumps everyone in together and it's not particularly respectful to people's individual ethnicities. Um, my question though is how forgiving should we be to those people who haven't caught up, who perhaps have good intentions, but make a misstep with that language? Oh, a hundred percent. I think it's, I think it's really, important that we allow room for growth I, I am not a zero tolerance person I think you know I know certainly in my life there's been you know from where I grew up there's things that I grew up thinking were true and when I see when I get a better version of the world I, I've changed my views and gone oh actually that was wrong and I'm sure that can be the, the case for people and language language it changes a lot it's hard to keep up with that stuff so um I think the difference is if you if you if someone uses a term and you say, oh, actually, that term's a bit more uh, because, and you explain why it's a problem, and then they go, oh, I don't care, and they carry on using it. Then they're deliberately trying to offend you. So that's a different, that's a, there's a different dynamic going on there. But someone I, may... I, say, I really <laughs> worry that, that we've lost a bit of, um, we've lost a bit of intent and nuance. Those are my two favourite words when I discuss conversations and arguments. I feel like in, in, in everything nowadays we've lost both if you make a misstep well then they presume your intent is wrong if you you know you might agree with someone and this goes back to sort of what we're talking about with black lives matter you might agree with one aspect of something but you might agree with all of it and i feel like in debate nowadays it is no pun intended very very black and white you're one or the other and you're divided and that's that and it's really depressing actually yeah i, I agree i've been a journalist for nearly 30 years, I believe in debate and conversation. That's not the same as saying, you know, my equality is up for debate, but I'm absolutely up to talk to anybody who is genuinely coming with queries or is genuinely curious about a conversation. Absolutely. And I think, you know, understandably, because a lot of people have felt hurt over the years or whatever, but, but, but um, one of the things that would be great is if we could go, okay, look, this is why this is a problem without without um you know ending someone's career or whatever but but 
you, you know, as you say, looking at the intent, looking at the context of what was said and looking at the intent of them saying it. Uh, listen, really good to talk to you, Maurice McLeod, CEO of Race on the Agenda, which is a social policy think tank. Um, do you agree with what you've heard? Is it perhaps less about what individuals do in these organisations and you should just stick to the wider message? We'll get what you've got to say about that after a quick break here on Talk Radio. Online.